Hey guys, um, so I wanted to show an example of a calibration file or a, a run that needed uh, a few of the compounds integrated correctly. So um, this is just uh, some one of our sites had run recently. So I just wanted to show you. So here's uh, her cal files um, one through she does six, but normally we just do five. But if you can see how most of them are integrated, but there's a few here that are white. So that means um, it looks like it wasn't found um, correctly. So let's do an easy one here on the end. Um, Hexachlorobutadine, you know, sorry if my pronunciation is incorrect. <laughs> They're not the easiest words to say. So, um, but we know that that's our last peak. So here it says our expected retention time is 1117, um, but it looks like that last peak is coming off at about 1067. So it's a little bit off um, and some of the other ones are probably off as well, but we'll just focus on this one just to give you a quick overview of how to do it. So what I would do, um, let's, we can minimize the quantitation report. And um, what I actually, what I did is I wrote down those two times. Um, and if you have multiples, you could kind of do like a spreadsheet or just write them down. It's just so much easier than clicking back and forth every time. So what we'll do is go to method development. And if you click on compounds, um, nothing pops up, but that's because we haven't opened our actual method. So if you go to the open master method folder here. Um, just click on the method that you're normally using, which is probably something labeled with Orsenko. Open that. And um, again, so click on this compounds tab. And then you'll click on detection. And here are the 30 compounds that we're calibrated for. And the RT here is the expected retention time that they're programmed um, at. And you know, over time, those retention times can change. Um, if your column, or especially if you've trimmed your column, or if even if as it gets dirty, sometimes things can happen that might delay some of the compounds or whatnot. So it's good to, you know, run a calibration probably at least every three or four months. Um, we're not doing certified sampling, so we don't have to do it quite as often as other labs. But um, it's definitely good practice to do it every quarter or so just to make sure your data is um, new and consistent. So here we can see the this compound is listed at 1118, which um, our compound came off at 1067. So the easiest way to do this is so when you click on it, um, over here comes up this uh, the quantitation peak and then confirming peaks. So here's your expected retention time. So we're telling the software right now that, oh, at 11.18, that's when this compound comes off. But um, it looks like that changed. So we're going to go ahead and change it uh, just 10.67. And you can click off of it. And it will identify to the new peak. Uh, this window is basically you're saying at 10.67 plus or minus 30 seconds is where you'll find this peak. So you can shorten that window, especially if you have really close eluding compounds. Um, I think 30 is kind of standard, but there's definitely some that come off really close together. Let me see if I can find an example. Um, 423 and 438. So obviously, you know, 23 and 38 seconds are pretty close together, but you know, they both have a 30 second window. So if you end up seeing issues where your software starts to identify one as the other, then you can definitely shorten that window to about like 15 seconds or something. And it'll at least help narrow down like, okay, from here to here is where we're looking, not from here to here. So um, it's just good when uh, they're really close together. Um, or yeah, carbon tet and 111 trichloroethane, those definitely come off really close. So yeah, it might be better to kind of narrow down those windows, but use your judgment. Um, more of when it becomes a problem is when I would go ahead and change it from the general default of 30 seconds. But 
So anyway, we changed that one. Um, and now you see 1067 here. Uh, we have to make sure we save that because if we don't, it will not uh, save it to the actual method. So just go up to the top, save master method, and that should have saved it. So then when we go back to analysis, sorry, I should tell you, ignore it. She's running currently, so we can just close out of that. That's irrelevant to what we're doing. Um, let's pull back our quantitation report here. Actually, I am mistaken. We'll close out of that one since I didn't close out of it before. Um, what you'll actually need to do is after you've updated your master method and you saved it, then you need to go back to batch view. And when you're in batch view, there's this update button. And yeah, if you just hover over it, it says update from master method. So that's telling uh, this specific batch that we're going to update it from that master method and not the other way around. So with trace finder, there's two methods. You have your local method and your master method. And what that means is on your local method, you can actually change compounds and things specifically to this run only. Um, and that's what the local method. But when I change it on the master method, that means any time you use this or Senka ODS method, they will all be updated to that. So if you can see, um, the hexachlorobutadine does not have that updated time. It's because we haven't updated that local method yet. So go back to batch view. And if you click update, it'll ask you, um, you know, this will update the local method and clear the batch results. So do you want to proceed? Well, yes, we do. So what it's gonna do is turn these all yellow and then we have to resubmit the batch. Now that doesn't mean we have to recollect the data because the data is there. So if you click submit batch, what that does is this acquired data is not selected. We're just processing the data with the new you know, terms of the method. So you wanna make sure this is not selected and it should default not because it knows, but if you click acquire, it's gonna think uh, you want to run whole new samples, but we'll just click uh, okay, and so for samples 1 through 25 in this particular run, it will update all of those times of that hexler chlorobutadine. So it might take a second as and you'll see as it scrolls through each one as it updates. Um, so we'll wait till they're all finished. Okay, so we'll go ahead and pull up our report and pull up our quantitation report. And the file that we were basing it off of was the Cal4 file. Yeah, open this up. So we'll just see. So now it's turned blue. Um, and we'll look here, 1067. So it now, and 5.2 on the concentration. So now we know it's integrated into the method so it knows, okay, well now our new expected retention time is this 10.67. So, and that should go for all of the samples. So as you can see, they all say 10.67. So it looks like we were successful. Um, so yeah, that's kind of how you do it. So you can go back through if you have more um, and identify, I would first identify and make sure you know which compound um, has changed the retention times, um, but um, which I will, sh uh, if you look at the video of um, using your spectra to identify, then you can use that to identify these compounds and make sure that you're adjusting the right retention times when you do that.